Welcome to lecture 7.5, Harmonic Functions. This is going to be our first glimpse into higher order PDEs. Okay, so there's a lot in this slide, but actually I want to start with something that's not on the slide. So in, in one dimension, the heat equation is, a, is this PDE, ut equals c squared uxx, and the wave equation, or we just learned about these, this is ut t equals c squared u, um, actually let me not write u, u of there, let me write this as uxx, that's better. Okay, and so of course in here, in these, u is a function of time and position x. So now, let's suppose that u is a function of three variables. So u now is a function of position x, position y, and t. So now our, our, our domain, spatial domain, is two-dimensional. So this right here, this first line, is the heat equation in two dimensions. So for example, if this thing here represents the temperature of a, at any point in a two-dimensional region, at position x and y and time t, then that will satisfy the heat equation. However, if this function represents the displacement of, I don't know, maybe it's a square membrane. So, so in both of these situations, we have a, a square region. Maybe x is going in this direction and y is going in this direction. In the first example, we have, we're measuring the temperature at a certain point in time. And the second example, we're measuring the displacement. So maybe there's this, this thing is made of, of rubber and, and there's waves that are going back and forth. In that case, this is the PDE that U is going to satisfy. So let me, let me give you a little bit of background on this. Let's recall the del operator from vector calculus. That, that was this funny little vector. It was a vector of differential operators, which at that point we weren't quite sure what that meant. And I think we, we've seen these enough to understand them a little bit better in this class. So th this, this is del. And then if, if you take del and you dot it with itself, well, you take this vector and take the dot product with itself, you get this cu curious thing right here. It's the sum of the second derivatives. And this is an operator. This, this is the sort of thing that you could um, a, apply to a function u. In that case, I would put u here. And you would get the sum of the second derivatives of u. So now here's a definition. Let's let u, as before, be a function not of two spatial variables, but of n spatial variables. So think of this as the temperature at time t, this position, or possibly the displacement, depending on whether we're talking about um, the heat equation or the wave equation, or it could mean something else. Um, these are not the only two PDs that come up in higher dimensions. Anyways, this thing is a function of n spatial variables. And then the Laplacian of u is this is um, I'm going to usually denote it like this: del squared of u, because it's you can think of it as del dot del applied to u, like we have up here. Um, sometimes we can write it like this, so you can actually see it's del dot del applied to u. Sometimes we put parentheses here. Um, and some books write it as as this thing here. There's this triangle apply to you. So this, this triangle is shorthand notation for del squared. However you want to write it, I'm going to usually stick with, with this notation. It is the sum of the second derivatives of u. The sum of the second spatial derivatives. So if t is in here, we ignore it. Now u might actually not be a function of time. You can still define this thing as the sum of the second derivatives. Okay, so up here, this is the heat equation and the wave equation. You may wonder, how does this generalize to three dimensions or to four dimensions or to n dimensions? Well, down here at the bottom, this is the heat equation in n dimensions. It's ut equals some positive constant times Laplacian of u. And the wave equation is just utt equals some constant times Laplacian of u. So notice that in two dimensions, these things are simply these equations. And in one dimension, these things reduce down to these PDEs up here. Okay, so let's start with a remark of something that we've seen for one-dimensional PDEs, but it's going to hold in higher dimensions as well. So steady-state solutions, or equilibrium solutions, 
These occur for the heat equation because heat dissipates, but they do not occur for the wave equation because waves propagate. So I should say when they do not occur for the wave equation, I'm assuming there is no damping because if there is damping, then the wave's going to die out. So let's draw a little cartoon of this. So let's, let's suppose that we have a, a rod here and the temperature of the left end point is fixed and same with, same with the right end point. It doesn't have to be fixed, it can be insulated, but um, let's suppose that the initial temperature distribution is something like this, something that's definitely not spread out as much as possible. Then over time, the heat's gonna um, spread out and it's gonna approach this steady state solution, which is just a linear function. So this is the heat equation. Then the wave equation, let's suppose that we have a, a vibrating string. So this is called this the wave equation. And let me draw it, well, put an endpoint here. I'll just draw a line here for reference. So then as time goes on, this is like a plucked guitar string. This is going to vibrate forever, assuming that there's no damping. So it's going to look like that this, this wave travels left and right like this, but really what's happening is that at every point on the string, it's, it's going to go, it's going to oscillate up, up and down. So it's almost like we have a whole one-dimensional line of mass spring systems. Okay, so formally, a steady state solution means that the um, time derivative is equal to zero. And I should say that I'm assuming that u is a function of up to n spatial variables, possibly one or possibly zero, in which case it's really trivial, um, and, and time. So a steady state solution means that the time derivative is zero. So all steady state solutions satisfy this equation here. So this is the heat equation, this first thing is the heat equation. But the time derivative being zero means that we set this equal to zero. And so it's going to satisfy this thing that I'm circling. Now we can divide through by c squared and we get this thing here. So steady state solutions have the property that their Laplacian is equal to zero. In other words, the sum of the second derivatives is equal to zero. So a function is harmonic if that happens. So that, that's a, it's such an important concept that we give it a name, we say it's harmonic. So um, notice that steady state solutions for, let's summarize, for regular ODEs were constant functions because they were functions only of time and not of space. So time derivative being equal to zero meant that the derivative was equal to zero, which meant the function was constant. So steady state solutions of one dimensional PDEs, something like this up here, the heat equation, those were linear functions. They were not necessarily constant. Like this steady state solution is not a, it's a function of X. It changes as X changes. It just doesn't change as time changes. So for an example of this, let me give you an example, two dimensional harmonic function. So let's take F of X, Y was x squared minus y squared. So and I could stick a t in here if I need to, but I'm not going to do it because if, if the time derivative is zero, then we can just assume that it doesn't depend on time. We can assume that there is no time in here. It's like if we have a func function or the y derivative is zero, we can assume that y does not appear. Okay, so um, the second x derivative of this, of course, is two because you take two derivatives and this becomes two and this becomes zero, and the second y derivative is negative two. So for this function, the Laplacian of f is fxx plus fyy, which is equal to two minus two, which is equal to zero. So this function is harmonic, meaning it is a candidate for being the steady state solution to some two-dimensional heat equation. And we'll talk more about this shortly, 
And we'll also graph this and we'll try to understand graphically what it means to be harmonic. Okay, so here are two key properties of harmonic functions, and they should seem a little unmotivated right now, but hopefully by the end of this slide I will convince you why these are both very natural. So the first property is that the graph of a harmonic function, something like this, is as flat as possible. Okay, so now what do I mean by that? Um, let's suppose, I'm going to do several examples. Let's suppose that we take a coat hanger and we bend it one of those wire coat hangers and we bend it into some shape like this and we stick it into a bucket of soap. So we pull it out and we get some soap bubble and I claim that that soap bubble is going to be as as flat as possible, right? It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look something, I don't know if I can draw this very, very, very well, but it, it's like a potato chip surface. It's flat. Well, what you're not going to have it, are any local minimums. You're not going to have any bumps in here if this were an actual soap bubble. So let me actually write that down. So this is a, a soap bubble. Um, so as flat as possible. Another way to think about this is, is let's suppose that this, this is a wire coat hanger and you were to stretch um, plastic wrap over it, like saran wrap. Um, as tight as possible, or, you know, or maybe you make this into a drum. Well, then that's going to be as flat as possible. That is a harmonic function. So to think about how this corresponds to the heat equation, you can think of the boundary as being like the, the temperature that this thing is fixed at. And temperature is going to dissipate. It's going to spread out like a, how a soap bubble is going to spread out, or like how plastic wrap stretched around here is going to spread out. So... Um, so here's another example of this in 1D. Let's go back to one dimension for a moment. Um, oh, that's not, I don't want to say ID, I want to say 1D. Sorry about that. So in, in 1D, um, let's suppose that U of X and T is the temperature of a, of a bar with, um, say, suppose the left end point is zero. So u of 0, t equals 0, and u of the right end point, let's say that's L of t, is 100. So now I don't care what the initial condition is. So in this case, we, we, we have this little bar here, and the left end point is going to be 0, and the right end point is going to be 100. Maybe the initial heat distribution is something crazy like this. Well, over time, it's going to approach this steady state solution. Picture taking one dimensional saran wrap, maybe that's a string or rubber band, and tying it around these two pegs. So this blue thing is a rubber band. What's going to happen? It's going to be as flat as possible. The heat spreads out as much as possible. This is the one dimensional picture of this. This is just a two dimensional picture. This is arguably easier to understand because we've all dipped in a coat hanger or some sort of metal thing into a bucket of soap or a cup of soap and gotten something like like this. Okay, so um, let's go to this PDE here and let's, let's take this into one higher dimension. Let's suppose now that we have a um, two-dimensional region. So let's, let's suppose that my Instead of having a one-dimensional bar, we have a two-dimensional um, square region, a rectangular region. So maybe x is going in this direction, and y is going in this direction. And now we have a situation where u, oh, let me, let me move this over a little bit, where u of x, y, and t is the temperature of this of a sheet, like a, maybe a sheet of metal, or I don't know, some two-dimensional region at, um, at time t. And of course, at position x and y. So like we did here, let's fix the boundary to be a certain temperature for all time t. So now instead of fixing two points, we have to fix the temperature of the entire boundary. So let's suppose that 
at the back end, I don't, I don't know, I'm going to draw something like this, and let's, let's suppose that it's, this is made like, almost like it's made of wire, and I have something like this. So, and maybe I didn't do that last one very well. Oh, let's, let's make the last one zero, just to make things easier. So, you can think of this blue curve here as the wire, and I don't care what initial temperature distribution we, we have up here, that is going to spread out and die out. Oops, I didn't mean to erase it there. I meant to use my laser pointer. That's fine. This is going to spread out and die out, and it's going to approach that soap bubble surface. Like, I mean, let's actually try to picture that. Let's think about what were, were to happen if, if we were to um, dip this little thing in soap and pull it out. It's going to be as flat as possible. So again, the graph of, of harmonic functions are as flat as possible. And recall, this thing here, it satisfies u t equals c squared Laplacian of u. So the, so the steady state solution, steady state solution means that the u t is zero. So in other words, it means that the Laplacian of u equals zero. So algebraically, that means this equation holds. It's a harmonic function. Physically, it means it's as flat as possible. Graphically, it's as flat as possible. It's a soap bubble solution. And um, another physically way to think of it is that it is a steady state solution to the heat equation. So we have three things that are all the same. So let me write this down. So a harmonic, harmonic functions. In other words, Laplacian of u equals zero. This is one thing. And we understand that that is the same thing. So here I mean this the same. That is the same thing as being a steady state solution to the heat equation. So, in other words, if I, f if I fix my boundary to be anything, you know, however I want to bend this wire, which represents the temperature, I will get a steady, and I stretch the, I stretch the soap, or I make, I stretch the plastic wrap over it, I'm going to get a steady state solution to the heat equation. So we understand these two things are the same. Um, actually, I should say that better. The reason why we, these things are the same is just because set this equal to zero, and we get Laplacian of u is zero, so we get those are the same, but we also understand that steady state solutions to the heat equation, this is what I was just saying, these are the flat functions. And so think like plastic, uh, like soap, soap bubble. No, I'm not actually not convinced that soap bubbles are exactly harmonic functions, but they're pretty darn close. Um, so sub, soap bubbles are plastic wrap. And so we understand that these things are the same. So these are the same just based on our physical intuition, that the steady state solution should be what we get when we stretch plastic wrap over this boundary. That makes sense. And this makes sense algebraically because we just take our heat equation, set that equal to zero, and we get a harmonic function. Oh, I almost forgot the second key property. If F is harmonic, then for any closed bounded region R, the function f achieves its minimum and maximum values on the boundary. I think it's best to motivate this with an example. So with this soap bubble here, do you agree that if, if this, this boundary is made of wire, that if I were to hold this thing, no matter how I were to twist and turn it, the closest point to the ground is going to be the wire, not the soap. And the highest point from the ground, that's the maximum, is going to be the wire, not the soap. Similarly, in this picture here, um, the the hottest part of the region is going to be on the boundary. It's going to be, in other words, the highest point in the air is going to probably be up here, and the lowest point is also going to be in the boundary here. 
Equivalently, there are no local minimums or maximums in here. So, so if there were a maximum here, if there were like a little local maximum, we could take a little scissors and we could cut around that maximum and we could get a, a surface that would look like, like this with a maximum and that would definitely not be a harmonic function. Okay, so let me um, conclude with an example that we have seen before. I want to draw its graph now that we understand graphs of harmonic functions better. So this is x squared minus y squared. And now we know that this is a, a saddle point. I don't know how good I'm going to be at drawing this, but I'll, I'll do my best. You're welcome to pause this and draw this on your favorite calculator or graphing program if you want to, but I think I can do a, a reasonable enough job. Okay, so, so th this is a saddle point. And recall the key property that F achieves its min and max, this is the last property from last time, on, on the boundary. So this thing I've only drawn a piece of it, but you know, but it really goes on forever. Like this thing goes on this way and this way. So picture this saddle point in your mind. And suppose you were to take a cookie cutter and, and maybe make, make some sort of cut like this. So, so cut out a little slice, a knife or a cookie cutter, and, and take that slice out in front of you and, and uh, hold that slice out in your hand. And no, no matter how you make that cut, the maximum and the minimum of that cut is going to be on, on the boundary. So there's not going to be any local minimums in here. Um, see if there's anything else I want to say about this. Yeah, so that just means that this, this function is as flat as possible. You can imagine that if I took my cookie cutter and I cut out, oh, I don't know, this piece right here. So here, here I actually, I've actually done that. This is a finite chunk of this, that this surface is what it would look like if you were to take this, this wire, which goes over here, and stick it in a bucket of soap. That, that surface would look pretty much like, like this. That's because this is a harmonic function, i.e. it satisfies um, this equation here. Oops, not. It should be plus f y y equals 0. And so one more definition I'm going to include this with. This will be the topic of the next lecture. Um, the PDE... So um, del squared of u equals 0. This PDE has a name. It's called Laplace's equation. And because this is a Laplacian of u. So this is Laplace's equation. When we solve, well, let's go back to the beginning. When we solved the ODEs and we solved a... Um, solve the non-homogeneous ODE. We want, how did we do that? We said y of t equals y h of t plus y um, p of t. So to solve an ODE, we solve the homogeneous equation plus the particular solution. And frequently this was the steady state solution. When we solved a PDE, u of x t we solve the homogeneous first solution first, plus the steady state solution, which was a particular solution. And when we solve the heat equation in higher dimensions, we're going to do the same thing. We want to solve um, the homogeneous equation plus the particular solution. And the particular solution in higher dimensions is going to be a harmonic function. And so to solve that, we are going to have to solve Laplace's equation. So solving this PDE is how we find the steady state solution to the heat equation in higher dimensions. And it's important enough that it will be the topic of the entire next lecture.